today I'm under this old Mercedes trying to find a transmission leak. Now these transmission leaks can drive you nuts because sometimes they're very difficult to isolate. You'll get under the car and you'll see a bunch of fluid around the transmission and you'll think, oh, maybe it needs a new pan seal. Or how do you know it's not the front seal coming out of the shaft? Well, here's a couple tips. And then I'm going to take you through the process of how I troubleshoot a leaking transmission. And then I'm going to show you all the different places it can leak, things that you can fix yourself. Obviously, if it's a seal, a front uh, torque converter seal, you've got to remove the transmission. And I'm hoping that's not the case with this 300 TD. The reason is, when I park it in storage, it just keeps leaking. It'll just keep dripping on the floor for weeks. <laughs> Now, if it were the front seal that were leaking, you would drive the car and you'd come in and park it and it would drain out what's already spilled inside the bell housing and then it would probably stop leaking. So because it keeps leaking, dripping over a long period, it probably means that there's either a seal or an O-ring that's letting fluid seep by and doing it very slowly. So I'm hoping that this is something I'm going to be able to fix without having to take the transmission out of the car because I really don't want to do this. So the first thing I do is get into the car and thoroughly clean the transmission area. You're not going to be able to find the leak if it's all oily and greasy. Thoroughly clean it and then, just like you see here, put either a piece of cardboard or a drip pen under the car overnight, which I did, and just let it drip and that'll give you <laughs> the location. In fact, if you have a laser, you can put the laser down by, by the leak and shoot it straight. Or maybe you old timers, you can use a plumb bob <laughs> to find out where the leak is coming from. But I'm gonna take you underneath now and show you the transmission pan the area around the pan, above the pan, and let's see if we can find out where that leak's coming from. When I look at these drips on the pan, it's pretty obvious the leak is coming from the right side of the transmission. So let's go down the right side of the transmission and see if we can spot anything that's going on. Okay, you can see it's wet right along that edge all the way to that bolt. It's kind of wet on that bolt. But I come around the front here and it's also dripping off the front. So it's dripping in this area and it's dripping right in this area. Are we going to assume that it's just the pan gasket that's leaking? Uh, think again. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna reach up above the pan and I'm gonna make sure there's no wetness up in this area because it could be leaking from up above. All right, that's dry. That's the area right below the Bowden cable and that's not wet. I'll go back here behind the kick down switch. Okay, look at my glove. My glove is picking up moist. Most of that leak is right along there. And you notice there's a drip right here too. So let's go up in this area and see if it's wet. I'm going to have to stop and clean off my glove. Because if your glove's all wet, uh, this test isn't going to work, but we know right now that there's a lot of fluid leaking out right here and there's a lot of fluid leaking out right there and it doesn't look like it's coming from above. This is really important. You really need to make sure that there's not something leaking above the pan before you assume that's the only place your transmission is leaking. I think I've got my glove cleaned off a little bit, so let's go back up to this forward section of the pan where it's leaking. It's leaking right in here. But I'm going to reach right up in here. This is where the fill tube is. And I'm going to reach around that fill tube and see if I've got some wetness up there. So it does indeed look like most of the leak is coming out of the pan gasket. <laughs> now that's an easy one to fix. But I'll tell you what. I may want to change a couple of O-rings up in that area just as a preventative measure. I do see a little wetness up here, but it doesn't seem to be dripping from that area. But there might be a leak here in this kick-down switch because I see fluid here. You have to be really careful just assuming that because you see oil in a certain area, that's where the leak is because it could be wicking from somewhere else. So we're definitely going to look into this one. 
We're definitely going to replace the pan gasket. I'll do a fluid change, and then I think I'm going to change the O-ring for the fill tube, which is located right up in here. While I have the fluid draining out of the transmission on the 300TD, I thought I'd bring you over to this transmission, it's identical, and show you some of the common areas where I have discovered leaks in the past. I'm going to talk about the easy to repair leaks because the more difficult ones or the less common ones I won't be getting into in this video. But this is the right side of the transmission. And let's just walk through where most of the common leaks come from. Now the pan, of course, is an obvious one. A lot of times it's due to damage to the pan when the bolts have been over torqued. And I'll show that to you when we pull the pan off the other car. But here I'm going to start with the fill tube O-ring. Now, we carry these on my website. Each one of these O-rings are sealing parts. We do carry on my website so you can replace these. But the fill tube sits right in here so you can see the leak will come right off underneath this banjo bolt and kind of drip off the pan. But the O-ring sits right in here and this plugs right in like this. And this is something that I'll probably replace on the car that's on the lift because this is a very common leak. The O-ring just gets hard and brittle over time and it will not seal. Okay, the next thing you want to look at are these banjo bolt washers. These are aluminum crush washers. And when they've been used and reused, like this one, this one looks like it's been crushed two or three times, these can leak. Now we do sell these washers on my website. And of course, if you're gonna replace them, you're gonna to have to you know, drain the transmission. But don't assume because you have a leak here that you can just reef on this. A lot of times if these crush washers have been damaged, tightening it more will even make it worse. So the best thing is if you're getting a leak around this area is to get a couple of these new washers and replace them. Now moving up the side here, you see we've got a couple of pistons. Now there are O-rings in here. These are very difficult to replace. And uh, I, you know, generally you don't see leaks. These can leak, but most of the time not. But this is one that does leak right here. This is the Bowden cable, the kickdown cable. They call it the kickdown cable, but it's not really a kickdown cable. Uh, um, this is a cable that controls your shift points in the transmission. And there's an O-ring right there. Now I'm going to show you one of the other Bowden cables that I removed from another transmission. You can see the O-ring here has pretty much flattened out. And it's gotten very brittle. The problem is, how do you get this out? <laughs> I remember for uh, over five years, I struggled with this trying to remove this because if you grab a hold of it and start yanking on it, you can damage it. If you notice, there's these little clips right here, and these clips that go in and lock in get very brittle, and they'll either break, like this one has started to break, or they just won't collapse enough for you to get this out. And it wasn't until we developed our special clamping tool. Now, we use this tool in the shop, and we sell this to clamp onto all kinds of things, including spark plug wires, rubber hoses, or whatever. But I discovered that I can use this tool to clamp onto this Bowden cable and pull it. You have to pull it straight out of the housing. The problem is you don't want to be clamping like this because you can damage the plastic here. And we include with this tool these parts right here. These are to protect whatever you're pulling or clamping onto. So I'm going to use the plastic one, and I'm going to put it right on here. And if you note, I can get a hold of it now and clamp down real hard. But there's one other thing I'm going to do before I pull on that. I'm going to warm it up with a, with a heat gun because I want that plastic to soften up a little bit before we pull it out. Now, you don't want to get too hot. You don't want to melt it. And this is the area you want to heat right in here. I'll keep touching it to see when it gets almost too hot to touch. I 
clean that off, make sure it's dry, and I'm going to clean the plastic protector off. Because it will it will try to slip on this if it's greasy. Let's try the rubber one. Of course, you know, I would have to get a really tough one for the purpose of this video here, but I'm going to try another little trick. You can imagine trying to do this with a transmission up at the car, you're going to have to get this tool up in there. What you're doing is you're pushing. You may be able to pry, but what I want to do now is get a clamp on here and see if I actually have something I can pull against without that rubber or plastic slipping. So I'm going to be a little careful here, okay? Now I'll put the All right, let's see. <laughs> Is this going to work? Oh, wow. No. <laughs> Whoever engineered this didn't use very good critical thinking. You know, they should have made this with a little notch right here so you get hold of it. But they had to taper it. <laughs> Sorry for laughing, but that's really stupid, okay? Um, Nobody's thinking about trying to get these off 30 years after they're manufactured. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, wow. It's the worst one I've ever had to deal with. Just hope that yours doesn't leak here. I got it. Look at what happened. See, it broke that little lip right there. That's what's really holding it on. But I tell you, without this tool and a little heat and this clamp here, look at how far that pulled that back. But this will be reusable. As long as you have three of these intact, a new O-ring is going to help to hold it in place. So once again, you can see right here that that O-ring is totally flattened out and is very hard. So this is a very common leak and a tough one to fix, but it can be done without having to remove the transmission if you use some of the tricks I just showed you. Now moving on up here, here is where that kick down switch is located and there's a ceiling ring underneath that. So that may be the cause of a little bit of seepage on the transmission that's in the car. And of course, here is the rear cover with the rear seal. I've hardly ever seen any leaks coming out of the rear output shaft seal, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Now, let me take you over to the other side. There's a couple other places over there where you could be experiencing leaks. You know, I didn't intend to spend so much time on the bone cable, but I do need to make another comment kind of reinforce what you'll be dealing with. Remember, with the transmission in the car, you're not going to be able to pull. You're going to have to push. You're going to have to go up in there like this and get a hold of it and push up on it. Sometimes you can get something under here and pry as it's coming up this way. But it can be done, but I tell you, it's not fun. Okay, over on the left side of the transmission, of course, you've got 
the trans cooler line, the banjo bolt uh, washers, we've already discussed those, so you might have a leak in this area. There is an O-ring underneath the transmission modulator, and sometimes that O-ring will leak, and we do have those O-rings on my website as well. Not too common, but there is a leak that can come out of the shift shaft seal that's behind this neutral safety switch. You can get to that. You're going to have to remove the valve body and go inside the transmission and remove a bunch of parts. But I have been able to replace this seal. We do not carry this on our website because it's not a very common leak. So that kind of wraps up the simple leaks. Of course, uh, there are other leaks that you may have to deal with. But these are the ones that you can fix with the transmission in the car. Now I'm going to go back and pull that pan off the other transmission. Let's see if we can figure out why that transmission gasket was leaking so badly. Here's a couple words of caution if you're going to remove your transmission fluid pan. <laughs> One thing is when you pull that little plug to drain it, look at that, it does not get it all out. So just be very careful when you lower it down that you don't tip it or you're going to get transmission fluid all over yourself or all over the floor. The other warning is make sure you put a large drip pan underneath the transmission. You probably won't even be able to catch it all with a pan because it's going to drip all the way from the front of the transmission to the back of the transmission for probably the next six hours. So literally, I'm going to let this just drip away overnight, and I'll come back tomorrow and replace the filter in the pan. But right away, when I pull the pan, I'm looking at this, and I say, what's this weird blue color? All these gaskets are supposed to be black. And upon closer inspection, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, look at this. That's silicone. Someone took and put silicone on the gasket. Now, I don't know if they put it on a new gasket hoping it would enhance the seal or whether they had an old gasket and wanted to reuse it, but that's an absolute no-no. You put these seals on dry, totally dry. You do not use any RTV. RTV is the absolute worst because once the oil gets in there, it just wicks right by the RTV particularly if you don't get a perfect seal, and that's often the case on the bottom of transmission. RTV, by the way, is only good if the two mating surfaces are absolutely, and I'm going to say absolutely clean of any oil products, and that means microscopically clean. So I see all these mechanics slapping RTV and silicone sealing on everything, and if the surfaces aren't perfectly clean, this is what's going to happen, just like this. We have a pan gasket on the transmission that's just been leaking fluid all over the ground. So in a way, that kind of makes me happy because I can take this pan, clean all the RTV off this edge, and get a new gasket and put it on, and I think I've solved the, probably 95% of my leak problem. Once again, if you're going to replace your gasket, you put it on dry. No sealant allowed. So in this particular case, you got to see how I found the leak. And like I said, there's a couple of little seals I'm going to change up there. But uh, this is the major problem right here. I don't see this very often. This is kind of a new one, particularly that much, that much RTV on both sides of the gasket. And you can see what happened. It literally made that a smooth surface, allowing the transmission fluid to weep right by. I've removed the pan and, and did a preliminary cleanup so we can take a close look at this. I have to admit, when I realized that most of the leak was coming out of the seal gasket on the pan, I thought the pan was going to be deformed because I've seen this so many times. I didn't think it was going to be because somebody gooped the entire gasket with a silicone sealant. <laughs> That's amazing. You can see what happened here. It just made this a smooth, very slick surface. This is supposed to be, you know, three ridges to help seal this up against that smooth bottom side of the transmission. But I want to talk to you about the pan because this is uh, the problem I see most of the time is people tend to over torque these bolts. Now these are stops. These six things sticking up here are stops designed so that when you tighten the pan down, this comes up and stops and sets the proper gap between the pan and the transmission. So you don't over 
tighten the gasket. I've actually seen people tighten this so much that it's split the gasket, okay? You don't over torque these bolts. You tighten them down until they bottom out. You'll feel them bottom out and then you just maybe give it another quarter turn and that's all you do. So if you find that your tabs are all bent out of shape and in particular, if you see these holes are collapsed in, this one here is collapsed in, I'm going to take and back this up and get a center punch and flatten these out. So that all these holes will be flat and then I'm going to make sure all these tabs are lined up and not tweaked. Because if the tabs are tweaked, when you go to tighten the pan up, the stops will hit before you have adequate pressure on that uh, rubber gasket. So if your pan is way out of whack, if it's warped and the tabs are all bent out of shape, I would recommend finding a replacement transmission pan. I hope you found these tips helpful and be sure and visit my website if you need parts that will help you fix the leaks in your own automatic transmission.